Joining me now, Nerd Wallet founder and CEO Tim Chin. Tim, what are the best credit cards in this environment, if any? Thanks for having me, Dagan. You know, NerdWallet helps 20 million people a month uh, make decisions just like this one. And, you know, as you said, inflation is defining America right now. So, uh, you know, there's kind of two buckets to think about here with inflation. Uh, the first one is uh, really how to make ends meet. You know, we see 26% of cardholders in a recent survey running up balances uh, just to get through to the next month. And second, it's really about trimming costs. So getting a few percent cash back uh, can really help. We're getting some discounts on those uh, travel that people are doing now. So in terms of interest, uh, you know, you can get 0% for up to 21 months with a card like the Wells Fargo Reflect. And that's great for purchases and balance uh, transfers alike. And so that's a great option. Now on cash back, uh, some people like to keep it simple like me. Uh, for no annual fee and 2% cash back, uh, you can get that on a couple different cards out there, like the City Double Cash or the Wells Fargo Active Cash. Um, and if you're a suburban American that spends a lot on groceries and gas, a good one to think about is the Amex Blue Cash Preferred. 6% back on those groceries and streaming services, 3% back on gas, and 1% on everything else, well worth the big annual fee. And finally, travel gets really complicated. Uh, I, I live near a United Hub in the Bay Area, um, so... The Chase Sapphire series is a great option for me. I can transfer those points to United Miles, uh, but things get really personalized depending on what hotels you stay at, what airlines you fly, whether you care about you know free check bags, et cetera. So NerdWallet can certainly help you figure that out. Patrice, jump in here. Do you have something for Chim? Yeah, I'd love to talk about kind of credit card balances overall and what how it speaks to American households' financial health. I mean, according to the Federal Reserve of New York, you know, credit card balances rose about 13 percent in the second quarter of, of this year, and that's um, probably the highest year-over-year -year increase in about 20 years. So we understand inflation is really eroding families' ability to maintain that quality of life. You know, looking forward, do you continue to see you know uh, you know this, these rising credit card balances you know continue to 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 continue to accelerate? And then also, do you expect delinquencies to start to rise? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. You know, we we're still below pre-pandemic highs. We're we're just getting back there. Um, we had a period where you know people couldn't leave the home and couldn't spend as much money, and you had stimulus on top of all that, which really combined to make consumer balance sheets really healthy. So we're really seeing a bounce back from that. Um, so there is room to run for sure. Uh, in terms of delinquencies, I think one of the big conundrums to think about is just record low unemployment right now. Um, and so, you, you know, you've got 1.8 uh, job openings per applicant. Um, there may be a shortage of qualified applicants. So that, that's kind of a mystery to us. We've never seen um, delinquencies shoot up without corresponding unemployment, but that, that could be on the horizon as well. But Ken, it's also the people not in the workforce. You've seen the labor participation rate declining, and it's the burden put on those people who aren't working or having to work uh, second jobs or take on additional work to try and make ends meet, Kim? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, there's there's certainly a lot of uh, dispersion in the workforce. You know, you've got probably uh, too, too few qualified applicants for a lot of the openings out there and a, a lot of people also looking for work. So it's, it's a tale of two Americas. Kim Mahoney, jump in here. So, I thought so uh, Tim, really great information. So, obviously, anybody that's watching this will say, of course, let's transfer to that 0% Wells Fargo credit card you mentioned. But someone has, you know, a 14% interest rate now or 16% interest rate. I mean, what do they need credit score-wise or what do they need to actually get that 0%? So, I don't think people can just, like, switch over. I think we all would do that, right? Is there a certain level of, of credit worthiness for someone to be able to get that 0%? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a, one of the big misconceptions. You actually need good or excellent credit in order to qualify for those balance transfer credit cards. Um, you know, we're seeing one in six Americans tap into the buy now, pay late, later features uh, that are now being built into a lot of credit cards as well. So those those do uh, charge interest, um, but are a little more transparent sometimes than uh, some of the other options out there. Tim Chen, thank you so much for being here this morning. Great insight, great information. Tim Chen, we'll see you again soon. 